Well, the fourth annual Pension Funds and Alternative Investments Africa Conference kicks off in March, albeit virtually, and on this year's agenda is the developmental impact of pension funds allocating capital in broad-based economies. Joining me now, ahead of kickoff, to share his views on asset allocation, the opportunities available, and how to navigate some of the associated risk in the current investment climate is Sanjeev Gupta, who's Executive Director for Financial Services at Africa Finance. Corporation. Thanks so much, Sanjeev, for your time uh, today. So as a majority private sector-owned African development financial institution, what's your take on African infrastructure as an asset class right now and the growth potential it presents? Uh, when it comes to infrastructure, which is, again, one of our primary mandates, uh, you know, you don't need to look at data. You just need to travel around Africa to see for yourself the deficit in terms of what the requirements are, with or with what is available on the ground. So the, de the demand is there. And as you've seen, when you build projects, roads, bridges, airports, telecommunications, there is a demand for it. So there is a gap and there is a demand. So obviously it is an attractive asset class if projects are structured properly. And one thing I'll tell you, which people forget, is that the actual default rates in Africa on infrastructure project finance is one of the lowest in the world, which tells you that projects can be created, can be developed, and people can make money out of it. So, so Jim, to me, it's a no said, Are insurance and pension funds sitting up and taking notice of that investment opportunity that comes with financing infrastructure in Africa, or are we looking at a significant uh, funding gap that needs to be closed? Yeah, the funding gap exists because unlike a lot of other parts of the world, the countries themselves have a fiscal challenge and therefore their ability to provide the long-term funding is limited, if not obviously in, in many ways, obviously non-existent in, in certain cases. The other problem we have is that countries in Africa do not have quality credit ratings. So even when they are willing to back an investor with their guarantees and what have you, that is not bankable. So when you ask me what the role of the insurance and the pension funds are, it's got a big role to play because in, South, in Africa itself, you've got a $2 trillion plus, $2 trillion plus, which is almost in excess of the GDP of the continent, of pension and life funds available sitting on the continent. Then you have the trillions of dollars uh, uh, that is sitting outside the continent looking for returns, especially in a COVID era, as you know, global liquidity is very high. People are not earning any yields. So that money is sloshing around, looking for, for returns. So that's why the continent needs to find a way of working with the insurance and pension funds. Because insurance and pension funds have one thing that infrastructure financing needs, and that is the long-term horizon. Both the asset side and the requirement from the investor side, therefore, is in tandem. The question is, therefore, why is it not happening? Why isn't it uh, happening, Sanjeev? And how do you see infrastructure investment actually adapting to the new normal post the COVID pandemic? Yeah, that's the biggest contradiction of our times, isn't it? That on one side, you have the demand. On the other side, you have the money. But on the third side, you don't have the projects. And the reason is, which is a gap that we are trying to fulfill, is that infrastructure development, by definition, has a lot of early stage risk, number one. Number two, it requires a lot of collaboration between various states, various communities, various governments to make large infrastructure projects happen. So knocking heads together take time. And the third and the big issue is what we call the de-risking of it, whereby when pension and life funds come in to invest, they are not taking any development risk, they're not taking any construction risk. To a large extent, they're not even taking any credit risk. What they're taking is a risk that the project will continue, money will be earned, and they'll earn a stable return. So why that bridge is not being built, excuse the pun, is that somewhere down the line between the demand, the available cash, and the investment that needs to happen, not enough people are playing the role of a project developer, not yeah. enough people are playing the role of the early stage uh, mover, and not enough people are taking those early stage risks. It's happening, 
but it's got to happen at a much larger Absolutely. scale. Absolutely. And of course, remember, that's some of the conversation, yeah. Sanjeev, that's going to be happening at the Pension Funds and Alternative Absolutely. Investments Conference 2021. Let's leave it there for now. Sanjeev Gupta is Executive Director for Financial Services at the Africa Finance Corporation.